Your playground Yu-Gi-Oh never existed. It isn't real. Or at least that's the common rebuttal that you'll hear in a lot of online Yu-Gi-Oh discourse around old school versus new school Yu-Gi-Oh. And so it's something that I wanted to talk about because I feel like both sides are doing it a little bit wrong. And I think that there are some really valuable and positive solutions that we can get from it. So what do I mean by all of this? Well, basically, if you hop on Facebook, Twitter, Discord, YouTube comments, you'll find all kinds of people arguing about whether or not, you know, modern Yu-Gi-Oh has gone to the dogs. Is it beyond salvation, right? There's so many summons. It's so complicated. It's so crazy. It's so awful. At least that's what, you know, some naysayers believe. Yu-Gi-Oh was better back in the good old days, they'll claim, before all of these extra decks, before all of these hand traps, before all of these combos. And obviously, we have to dissect a couple of things. Because the good old days is a very nebulous term. That's not a Yu-Gi-Oh thing. That's when people talk about generations, the economy, marriage, whatever. Like, people always kind of claim it was better back in the good old days. Well, when people think about kind of the old school playground Yu-Gi-Oh meta, what comes to mind for you? For me, it's something that I did in fact experience, right? I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh back in like the second grade, and this was like in 2002. I watched the TV show, I, you know, I collected lots of cards, I went to Walmarts and Books of Millions, all sorts of different like card game sort of events, all my friends played, I kept my cards in rubber bands and shoe boxes, I've been there. And I think what even more so defines this period is A, liking the anime and kind of uh, taking that anime and applying it to just how you engage with the game. So in, if you watch like, you know, the anime, Duelist Kingdom, especially Battle City, characters broke the rules a lot. Obviously, you know, Yugi's famous for like attack the moon with uh, Celtic Guardian or fusing Mammoth Graveyard with Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon to melt it from the inside and that kind of thing. Heart of the cards, right? And so uh, when a lot of kids would see that and start playing Yu-Gi-Oh, they basically took a lot of those made-up rules and applied them to the playground. So that's where you get a lot of that, um, oh, I can run, you know, 300 cards in my deck. If I run out of cards in my hand, I can just draw five more. I'll run however many copies of a card I've got, right? Oh, I own seven Pot of Greeds? Okay, well, my deck's going to have seven Pot of Greeds in it. And so... That, in addition to the fact that most people didn't actually even know the proper rules of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because the anime didn't show them, and also because kids were like 6, 7, 8, and like we weren't actually reading any of it, we didn't know really anything about tribute summons. You have blue eyes, you summon it. You want to make a fusion monster, you just pick the two monsters and you just put the fusion monster on the board or whatever, you make up its stats. And I think that for a lot of people, this was the core memory part of Yu-Gi-Oh! Kind of the foundational part of it. Now, here's the counter-argument, and I didn't call it an argument, it, it is, this is a truth of the matter, is that Yu-Gi-Oh! has always had a metagame. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! even in 2002, 2003, when kids, like myself, were playing it, you know, on the playground in second grade, third grade, whatever, making up crazy rules, there were still ban lists. Yu-Gi-Oh!'s had a limited list since, like, just a couple of months after the game released, and it's always had really strong, broken cards. Running, you know, Raigeki and Dark Hole and running Harpy's Feather Duster were always going to be seen as, like, stronger than whatever awkward, shitty, level 3 vanilla monster that you had in your deck, right? Uh, even, you know, going forward in the years, things like Exiled Force or Breaker of the Magical Warrior or DD Warrior Lady, right? All of these cards were going to be stronger cards. There was a metagame. Chaos Emperor Dragon and Yada and stuff like that kind of created the first banned banned cards. And so, um, I think when people come onto the internet and they see arguments about how Yu-Gi-Oh's gotten, you know, it's too crazy these days, right? It's gone too far. They'll say things like, well, it was better back in the good old days. And then you'll hear somebody kind of counter their argument with, no, Yu-Gi-Oh's always had a metagame. There have always been unfair decks. There's always been overwhelming strategies. There have always been expensive or elusive cards. And both sides are right. And I'm not trying to just play like the whole both sides-ism. I mean, they literally are both right. I think when people use the argument, um, your playground meta didn't exist as sort of a way to shut down and invalidate that experience, I don't think that they're necessarily wrong about it, right? The playground meta wasn't the right way to play the game, but it was how a lot of people played the game, so you can't blame them for coming into the modern day and hearing about Yu-Gi-Oh! again and thinking, man, it's gotten so much crazier, that's not how I remember it. So what do we actually do about the whole predicament, right? Because I think that if you just tell people, yeah, meta, like, or Playground Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't exist, there's always a meta, and you were just too dumb, and you didn't know how to play it, that's not really going to, like, quell people's sort of concerns or fears or apprehensions about playing the game. I think for a lot of people, yes, there's going to be some bitter types who just say Yu-Gi-Oh! is beyond salvation, it's awful, and they also have no interest in ever playing this game again. They just show up on internet forums, and they're just kind of being negative, right? 
But I do think that there are people who want to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh, but just find themselves simply a little bit overwhelmed and maybe surprised that some of the cards that they remember aren't played anymore. They might be surprised that even cards like Mirror Force aren't really seen as good, or staples like MST and Call of the Haunted just aren't really played anymore, right? It's a little bit strange and a little bit, you know, it, it feels like a very foreign, overwhelming concept. They might not really understand that like hand traps are kind of how you have to interact with your opponent and that games can be decided a little bit faster. I'm not saying these are bad things, but that I see how they could be off-putting to somebody who's just trying to get back in. So I think if you come at it from an approach of like, well, the way that you used to be playing it, that good old days that you're talking about wasn't real and it was invalid is not really the answer because it's not going to make them feel any better about Yu-Gi-Oh. If anything, it kind of makes the kind of modern Yu-Gi-Oh community of content creators or competitive players or, you know, super diehard, you know, kind of hardcore people on the internet, it kind of makes them seem a little bit mean and a little bit alienating. So the solution that I think and this is something that I've been trying to do over the last couple of years is when there's somebody who genuinely wants to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh, wants to give it another try, the thing I've been trying to do more than anything is sort of show them that, like, first of all, accept that their experience was real. It was valid, right? The way that you played Yu-Gi-Oh! in the schoolyard or whatever, online, not online, but like on, well, I guess it was Yu-Gi-Oh! online, but like um, with your friends, kind of before the online world took over, you were just watching the show and playing with people at school or in the cafeteria or whatever, it was real. And the feelings that you kind of experienced there were real, right? The whole, like, you've activated my trap card or... You know, you thought you won, but I actually had this, or my monster's stronger. You can actually take a lot of those feelings and a lot of those experiences, and they can be a part of the modern game, believe it or not. So, how do I mean? Well, first of all, if you are an anime fan, you might be surprised to know that, like, Dark Magician and Blue Eyes are kind of crap in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! At least the vanilla monsters are. But something that you can tell somebody is that, hey, a lot of your favorite iconic anime monsters do actually have support now. You can play a completely dedicated Guy of the Fierce Knight strategy or a Blackluster Soldier strategy. There's even a Gate Guardian strategy. So you no longer actually have to just make up the idea of like, oh, I just summon my Gate Guardian pieces or I summon the Gate Guardian straight from my deck and skip all the rules. No, you can actually play them now. And if you're willing to put in a little bit of effort in learning how they work, then it can actually be just as, if not more fun, because they've made a lot of the sort of anime support or legacy support, as people like to call it, they've actually made it surprisingly, like, capable of playing and winning. Not maybe winning a YCS, yeah, sure, but it can go to locals and stand a chance, and it can be really fun to play against your friends. You can combine Yugi and Joey's deck and make Red Eyes Dark Dragoon if you want to. You can use Red Eyes and Dark Magician. You can use their retrains and stuff. There's a lot of cool ways to carry those anime experiences and those anime monsters into the modern day. The second thing I would tell people is that even though the cards that you might remember like Mirror Force or Dark Hole aren't really played as much, a lot of the, still effect, a lot of the same effects can still be found in today's Yu-Gi-Oh! So for instance, I would say that Evenly Matched is actually an, sort of an analog to Mirror Force. It's roughly the same type of effect, right? Your opponent attacked you, your defenses seemed down, you activated Evenly Matched, and surprisingly, all of their cards are now going to have to go to the grave, or rather in this case, you know, get banished face down. The same thing goes with like Raigeki or Dark Hole. There are still cards that do that sort of thing, right? There is Lightning Storm. And technically Raigeki and like Feather Duster are still legal today as well. And also, when it comes to cards that do singular spell and trap removal, Cosmic Cyclone and Twin Twister do still exist, so they are sort of the MSTs. Floodgates like Swords of Revealing Light can technically still exist today if you want to consider, um, I don't know, Dark Ruler No More, not Dark Ruler No More, um, There Can Be Only One, and that sort of thing to be like a, a um, Swords of Revealing Light analog, that one's a little bit more nebulous. But the point is, a lot of the same sort of interactions and exchanges can happen in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! It's just that they are sort of different cards by different names, but it's all still there. If you liked Pot of Greed or Graceful Charity, well, we've got Pot of Extravagance, we've got, you know, Pot of Prosperity. So I think that when it comes to getting people to understand the game now, it takes a little bit more patience and empathy and understanding. Validate their experience a little bit. Let them know that, yeah, I do also remember how Yu-Gi-Oh! was played back in the cafeteria. You kind of have to meet people where they're at and then, I think, convert them from there. Which, God, that sounds kind of creepy when I'm thinking about it. It's like it's a cult. But maybe Yu-Gi-Oh! is a cult. But the point is, um, yeah, so I think that that is something that a lot of us are missing. Is There's this kind of people want to be right and wrong and they come at, at the argument like with bad faith. Right? Your playground meta never existed. Or modern Yu-Gi-Oh! is ruined because it's not like how I remember it. 
But in reality, Yu-Gi-Oh! is still Yu-Gi-Oh! The way the game's played today is very different than the way that the game was played like 20 years ago, but it doesn't mean that there can't sort of be some common ground and that a person can't be transitioned over. And worst comes to worst, I don't know, just show them go format, they'll probably be happy. All right, anyways, that's it. Let me know what you guys think. Have you ever encountered people like this online and how do you typically handle it? Because I think when I see people just kind of fussing and screaming and like just saying like, you're invalid, no, you're invalid, this game's stupid, no, this game's stupid, here's why it's dying, here's this and that. It doesn't really do very much anymore, so I think taking a more um, collaborative approach will get us a lot further. Okay, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts down below in the comments. Um, make sure you subscribe to APS Amplifier for more fun Yu-Gi-Oh! videos like this, and follow me over on Facebook and Twitter and all the other great places. Subscribe to the main channel, Team APS, as well. All right, it's going to be it. See you in the next one. Fast turn.